Okay, so after the last uh, month of Ben Azmanim, we had a break from Shurim of Kuzari, and we spoke before three Shurim on Kuzari and Shuva. Now we will start, or we'll go back to the normal, normal uh, track of the book. As we said already before, the book starts with a story, with a basic story of the king of the Kuzarim that tried to worship God and uh, he worshipped him in the best way that, that, that he has, in his best ability, we can, we can put it this way, and his action, he did a lot of actions and had a great philosophy, but at the same time, a angel revealed himself to him in a dream and told him your meanings are good but your actions are false and the dream happened again 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 and the king decides to do what to seek for the truth he says that it's not enough for me to only do actions I need to go after my heart after my instincts after my inner vision after my dream and do what? Seek for the truth. And we explain that the main point over here is and not, it's not a rational decision to go and seek for the truth over here. Because the king didn't have a rational reason to believe that his actions are not good. His meanings were perfect and his actions were okay according to his standard. The only thing that pushed him to look for God or to look for the, not sorry, not, not to look for God because he found God already. The only thing that pushed him actually to look for a answer, a better way of action is what? Is a dream. A lot of times it happens. A lot of times in logic people can explain to us how everything is perfect. But the problem is that this perfect, this good stage doesn't fit 100% with a dream. Who actually said the words I said before? Famous American uh, religion, religious person. Martin Luther King, right? And what he said, that if, he said I have a dream obviously, but he said that if compared to the life before, compared to the time of slavery, everything is okay. Black people are not slaves. Actually in some states even they're almost equal. Black people can do everything that a white person can. But at the same time, he said, it's not enough. Doesn't really mean that the dream, that the dream is fulfilled. In terms of rational aspect, everything is okay. But in terms of the dream, the dream pushed him to seek for a better life. And as we go on, in some way exactly the same happened to the king, to the Kuzari. Kuzari comes and says, according to the rational, according to the head, everything is perfect. But according to the dream, something better, something else can happen. And he goes and does what? He seeks for an answer. What if you want to seek for an answer? He says, I'll invite who? I'll invite the other perspectives. I'll invite the, uh, the, other, the other candidates for, for my own actions. I'll invite other religions. And he starts with who? And that's the opinion we'll start focusing today. He starts with a philosopher. Now, we need to remember when the Kuzari presents, when Abi Udalevi presents a philosopher, he doesn't speak about the philosopher of the time of the Kuzari. Abi Udalevi lived 400 years after the story. He speaks about the, about the philosophy of his own time. Actually, the, philo the main philosophers of, uh, of, uh, of uh, his time are two, Ibn Sina and Ibn Rashida. Both of them are Muslim philosophers. Both of them are religious Muslim philosophers that are taking um, Aristotle, Aristotle's uh, main, uh, main philosophy and combine it together with religion. Philosophia vidat biyachad. Philosophy and religion together. And this combination looks really tempting. Why it looks really tempting? Because everyone appreciates the power of the human wisdom. Everyone appreciates that. Everyone appreciates knowledge. Everyone appreciates philosophy. 
logical aspect, a, 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 logical, a logical perspective to the, towards life. That's something that everyone can appreciate. And it's even better if the center of the logic is what? Is God. Is the belief that God actually does exist. And then it seems that what? Everything is okay. Everything is fine. Everything is perfect. It's even more than that. If we check, if we check uh, carefully, um, if, if, if we check carefully the philosophy of, of these two that I mentioned, we'll see that the center of, this, of, of the philosophy is the concept of a rabbi. I'll explain, I'll explain a little bit. They claim that the main goal of life of human being is to be happy. And how you can be happy, what is the main way, what is the main, what, what, is, the, what, is, the, what is the main fear of being happy? Is understanding happiness. How we understand happiness? By understanding God. How you understand God? You need someone to teach you who is God. Who can teach you who is God? The smart person, the rabbi, the, 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 the person that deals with, 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 with philosophy. And the concept of rabbi is so strong inside over there and it looks all perfect. But it's not. And I want to explain why. I have over here a diagram. This diagram basically is what? That's the main perspective of philosophy. The relationship between God, the world, and man. Right? This basically every philosophical question will be connected to this triangle. Elohim, Adam, the Olam. Think about it. All the big questions are over here. We have a question of Bechira Chofshit. Question relationship between God and the world. We have a question of creation between God and man. We have a question of morality of, of moralities between the world and the man. All the big questions of philosophy are in this triangle. And that's basically the core of philosophy. But the problem is that you can draw a second triangle. Creation. Revelation and Redemption. Yetzira, Itgalut, Vegeula. And I want to explain a little bit more this concept of this, of this triangle. We're speaking about creation. It's not only God. It's also that God actually created the world. It's not only a world... Not only olam, but it's also what? It's also that the world has an option to be revealed, to be redeemed. It's not only a man, but it's also an opportunity for nevoah, for revelation of God towards humanity. I can say truly that philosophy deals with this triangle. But I can say truly that our sorry with this triangle. But I can say truly that our religion deals also with this triangle. And if we combine the two triangles, what happens over here? Now that's not only a trick. It's not my vote. Franz Rosenzweig in his book Kochava Geula, the Star of Redemption, explained the symbol of Magin David exactly this way. Shalom Rosenberg. The main, uh, the basically one of the main leaders in our days, he's also a rabbi and one of the main leaders of Jewish philosophy in, in the world, explained the concept of Magen David, the symbol, exactly this way. The symbol of Magen David, and over here it's only a symbol, it's don't take it as Torah Misinai. I don't know if that's a real meaning. But we can use the concept of Magen David to try and explain that. Ailokim shila philosophia, the god of his philosophy is a god. The god of the Jewish religion, the chidush of the god of the Jewish religion is a god that what? That is connected to humans. And look carefully what happens over here. It's not only that there is a god, there is a god that is connected to humans that actually created the world. He had a will to create the world. It's not only that we have a man, God actually cares from human beings. He reveals himself. 
towards human beings. It's not only there is a world, God actually has a program. There is an option for the world to go higher towards God. There is an option for redemption. These concepts are Jewish concepts, are concepts that were brought to the world by us, by our prophets. Anivim. Anivim ayu arishonim. The prophets were the first people to speak about it. If you, if you read the prophecy, if you read Sefer Ishayahu, you read Sefer Miyahu, you read the prophets, it seems, look at Moshe Rabbeinu, it seems that there is a connection, there is a connection between human beings to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That is the main chidush over here. After we gave this background, I want to look now inside the Kuzari, inside the book, and to see what is how the way the Kuzari, the way the Kuzari actually presents the claim of of of, of, of the philosoph, of the philosopher, and where in the Kuzari in the Kuzari Aleph Aleph, Ma'amar Ishon, and Ot Aleph. Let's see. אמרו, they said, כי כאשר רע המלך כוזר בחלומו, כי כוונתו רצויה אצל הבורא, אבל מעשהו אינו נרצה, when he saw that his action, that his, that his meanings, that his feelings, that his ways, that his philosophy is actually good in the eyes of the Creator, what his action is not, וציווה הוא בחלום לבקש המעשה הנרצה אל הבורא. And he got an order in the dream to ask what? To ask for the מעשה הנרצה, for the action that God actually wants to. שאל פילוסוף אחד שהיה בדורו על אמנותו. He asked a philosopher, one philosopher in his generation, what is your belief? What is your perspective? במה אתה מאמין? מה אתה חושב? Now listen carefully how the answer of the philosopher starts. ואמר לו הפילוסוף, אין אצל הבורא רצון ולא שנאה, כי הוא נעלה מכל החפצים ומכל הכוונות. הקדוש ברוך הוא doesn't have what? רצון. Has no will. Velo sina. No hate. Ki hu na ale. He is above. Kol hachafatim. All the objects. And kol hachavanot. And all the meanings. How basically he starts. He starts. Your dream told you what? Kavanat cha retsuya. Aval maase cha lo retsui. He comes to him and says. No. God doesn't have any will. He doesn't care. From will. Doesn't have any actions. Doesn't do any actions. Now, in the first, it looks, sounds a little bit shocking what it means that it doesn't care. But the answer is yes. God is so imminent. He's so far, far away. He's so, gr not far away, he's so great, so big, so perfect that there's no meaning and he has no will. Will is a term, is our term. He is above We see over here a second option to believe in God. Is that something that is shocking? Everyone says that if you believe in God, you need to be what? Religious. That's not true. A philosoph, the, the believer, the philosopher, the philosopher that actually believes, he says otherwise. And we see it a lot. He believes in a God. But he doesn't believe that God what? A. What? I'm not sure, even, even if philosopher is too much already, he doesn't believe that God A cares. Okay? And B has any connection to human beings and C has any connection at all. So then the question will be obvious. And you know what, before the question, let's read a little bit more. כי הכוונה מורה על חסרון המכוון, וכי השלמת כוונתו שלמות לו, ובעוד שלא תשלם הוא חסר. When you have a כוונה, when you have a will, שיש לך רצון, it means that what? It means that you, you want something, you're missing something. You can't say that God has a will. Because if God has a will, so therefore he is missing something. Chaser lo mashu. And he goes on. More radical. V'chenu na'ale etzel ha-filosofim mi'idiyat chilkei ha-dvarim. 
מפני שהם משתנים, ואין בידיעת הבורא שינוי. It goes on even more. This concept of having different parts, this concept of saying that God doesn't relate to that, but he relates to that, that there's good and bad in the eyes of God, that's an absurd. You can't say that. Why you can't say that? Because that's evil is a part. Good is a part. Good or bad are perspectives. Being, uh, having a perspective means having a part. Perspective is as it is. And the definition of perspective, it's not a complete look. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's one perspective. God doesn't have parts. Enu chalakim. Akol shalim. Akol mushlam. If you learned a little bit of philosophy, you know that this actually, this perspective really caught, was actually really hot in the times of the Greek philosophy, to try to explain the world in one way. Back then, before Aristotle, you had what? Just think about it. You had some people that tried to say that everything is water, right? or everything is complete, everything is something. And if something is, so therefore you can't have something that is not. He had a lot of philosophy that tried to explain everything in a one concept. When you try to explain everything in one concept and make everything therefore perfect, so what happens? There's no place for anything else. No place for parts. Now he goes even more. והוא אינו יודע אותך. כל שכן שידע כוונתך ומעשיך, וכל שכן שישמע תפילתך וירא תנועתך. God doesn't know you. Doesn't care. And even more than that, He doesn't know your actions. He doesn't hear your davening. Doesn't care from the way you move. Now, over here we're doing the second part of the jump. If till now we spoke about what? We spoke about a God that has no connection to human beings. So now we're going to the other action, to, to the other side of the equation. If God has no connection to human beings, so therefore human beings have no connection to who? To God. You can't be a regular human being and have connection to God. It's against everything. Your actions, your human actions are what? They do not care. They do not have any meaning. They are meaningful. They are meaningless. Your movement is meaningless. Your davening, that's mumbling words. There's nothing. That is the second part of the equation. Now, let's stop for a second and, tell, and, and you guys will tell me. A king, someone invites you and tells you what? And tells you, I have a problem. I went to sleep. And while I was sleeping, I heard an angel that tells me something about God. And you come and tell him, makes no sense because there's no God. Or, sorry, there is a God, but God doesn't care. What was the tactics of the philosopher over here? He really thinks that now the king will stop and say, time out, okay, I'm together with you? He asked a different question. It seems that the king does believe that God has connection to human beings. What stood behind it? What do you guys, give, give me your opinion. I know it's a good question. <laughs> well, what, what's, the, what's the philosopher's intention? Yeah. You come and ask. It's like, it's like me. He's a dream. He's trying to tell him his dream is a waste of time. It's just a dream. It's meaningless. But he believes in the dream. So he's telling the yeah, king well. He's still trying to believe. But why the king would, would choose to listen to him? Because I'll give you. Because he can stay the way he is. And it's easy just to dismiss the problem. Easy to dismiss a problem. Get, say it even more. Say it even more. Dalia said beautiful, stay who he is. Say, even, say, say more than that. 
Doesn't have, have to improve to more than that, a little bit more. It doesn't have to change. That's the same. Improve and change, it's, it's almost the same. I would say it's rational. So he found his answer, capiche the end. Like, he doesn't have to keep on working to find it, the truth. I would say, I would use everything, all the answers you guys gave me, and I'll, and I'll go even to the next step. I would say that there is, in some way, that is the default. And I'll try to explain what I mean. That is the default because all the reasons you guys say because the human being doesn't want to change, because the human being is rational, because the human being is what? Because the human being is uh, too scared of, uh, of, of developing. There are a lot of reasons. But the only thing that combines between the all, all, all the reasons, all the answers is what? The beginning, the human being. The human being wants to put himself in the center. He loves to feel what? Like he is in control. He wants to be in control. He wants to take the power on his life. When I come and say, there is a God. But at the same time I'd say, but it's not relevant to you, what happened? I do solve the big cosmic question. How is the world is over here? Or I did solve the big cosmic question, what started nature? What gave the first push? But in the same time, I left myself where? In control. In the center. If I speak about a God that cares about human beings, what he did? In some way, I lost control. In some ways, I looked on the world and I understood how small I am. If you know, if you know that in terms of uh, ast astronomy, the world, people believe that the world is where? In the center. Why, why the human instinct is to say that the world is in the center? Why? Because you want to be the center of everything. Because it's scary to understand that we are not the center. It's scary to understand that what? That there are bigger forces in us out there. And even more, if there is prophecy, if there is redemption, we understand that what? Not everything depends on us. There are two sides to tango. To tango. You say it in English? It takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. Imagine someone dances tango by, its own, by himself. So that's the reason of a philosopher. Basically, the philosopher comes and basically puts it out there. He says, you know what? You asked me one question, but I'm giving you a different option. Forget God. He's there, but forget the actions. Because I'll put you in the center. I'll put your actions in the center. What is the problem with this type of perspective. You tell me. Why you guys feel uncomfortable with this type of, of, of perspective? Because then what? Then what? Nothing has a meaning? I don't know if nothing has a meaning. I mean, you, there is a meaning. If you give something a meaning, there is a meaning. You still ask why are we here? What do you mean? Go on, go on with the question. What's our why would, why would either we created or and or what was our purpose? Oh, there's still a question. This triangle doesn't solve our biggest problem. What is our purpose? In some ways, a philosopher doesn't believe that we, do, that we have what? That we have a purpose. And why he doesn't believe that he has a purpose? Because what is the purpose? What is the purpose? Is the cause that is higher than you? Is the cause that is better than you? You have a purpose. The philosopher doesn't believe that there is a purpose. You have your own life. Live your own life. Let's go on. Ve'im yomru al-pilosofim shu bracha yom omrim ze al derech ha'avara nipnei shu ilat ha'ilot bevriyat kol nivra 
לא מפני שהוא בכוונה מאיתו. ולא ברא מעולם אדם, כי העולם קדמון. מה יש לנו פה? We can come to the philosophers and say, one second. You admit that there is a God, and this philosopher will say, yes, there is a God. You believe that the world is connected to God? He will say, yes, the world in some way came from God. So therefore you believe that God created the world, and over here the philosopher will say, no, God didn't create the world. And you guys will stop and say, what do you mean? If there is a God, and the cause of the world is God, how it can work? How you can say that God didn't create the world? And I'll ask you a simple question. When you walk out in the sun, no, I, I, I want to tell an answer. I want, I want to tell a story that will explain a little bit more. I lived in the last few years in Detroit, And in Detroit, there, most of the year, I need to be honest, for six, seven, for almost five, six months, you don't see the sun, basically. Really, it's, it's cloudy. Now, some people can get used to it. For normal people, they add vitamin D in the milk because of that, because if not, you're too depressed, and you can't leave the house because everything looks gray. But I remember the first day I went out, after the first winter in the States, and went out, and I saw the sun. And then something looked odd. And I looked on the ground, and I saw my shadow. I said, huh, I didn't see my shadow almost a half a year. That's interesting. I'm not used to it. Because there was no sun. But in a normal place, where there is sun, you even don't see the shadow. The shadow is just there. You cause the shadow. Yes, in some way, you are the cause of the shadow. But do you mean to cause a shadow? Is, is that your choice to cause a shadow? No. So you're saying it wasn't God's choice to create the world? According to the philosopher, it wasn't God's choice to create the world. The fact that there is God means that there is a world. Like the fact that there is a human being means there is a shadow. Now, you guys smile and say, makes no sense. But you need to remember that we will need to answer a simple question that is always in the heart of the opinion of the philosopher. If God is perfect, so how God has connection to the world? How God has connection to human beings? We, always, we, we, will, we will need to answer this question. For him, that's simple. So he has pluses we don't have. His perspective in some way has something that actually does appeal. Because if we use our mind and we try to develop and we develop even more and we get to a conclusion there is a God and God is perfect. So perfect means perfect. Second option is to say God is not perfect. And that's also not acceptable, right? We will need to ask ourselves what happened over here. That's one of the main questions The Kuzari, Rabbi Yehuda Levi, in his book, The Kuzari, will try to answer. He will try to answer how the perfect, almighty God can have a connection to who? To us, to human beings, to the world. And the answer is not simple. I want to, I want to stop this second and to dive a little bit more. There's a movie, Catch Me If You Can. Ever heard about this movie? What? It's a great movie. It's about a person that changes his identities um, uh, uh, from the age of 15. He plays a lot of people, and because he plays so many people, he forgets what? In some way, he forgets who he... Exactly. And he needs actually to try and figure it out. Mihu, mahu. He has all the time a mask on his face. Not a literal mask, but a image. There's always an image. In some way, his own personal core, his own identity is, is complicated. I'm not sure if it was, I'm not sure if it's uh, over there. 
That's nice though. There is a scene that I'm not sure if it's this movie or a different one, but again, it's the same. It's it's it's, it's the same idea of someone trying like five types of eggs and trying to decide which one he likes the best. Because this one, this identity likes, and this one, this identity likes, and this one, this one, until he figure out what he likes. The slippery thing of who is me, me ani, and what is the image, is not simple. You need to understand that in some way, the philosopher kills this question. I want to explain why. The question, me and me, which type of eggs I like, in some way, according to what we said till now, should be the, better, the, the bread and butter of the, of the philosopher. Because he puts the center on the human being. He puts the center on what the human being does. But the question, listen carefully. The question, which type, type of eggs I like more, has the assumption that in some way it is important to know for yourself what you like more. It's important for, for you to fulfill yourself. It's important for you to fulfill yourself to, towards the end of your potential. Because if not, what ambition of a human being will have to figure out himself? What pushes the human being to figure out himself? What pushes the human being to try and understand Mihu and not only live his life? What? A purpose. Not only a purpose, and that's something that I want to say and work, and work about it a lot. An external purpose. What I mean an external purpose? Something that he thinks that comes from outside. Something that he looks at and says, I need to define myself towards, compared to that. As religious people, we're always called to do what? To define ourselves compared to God. To define who we are. Who we are compared to God's will. That's in some way conflict we always have. If we want it or not. And the second we put this yarmulke on our head, we have a conflict. It's me against the Kadosh Baruch. And that's causing me against God, especially me to figure out me and me. And what actually I'm doing over here in this world. This only can happen if I believe that there's a purpose. Only well, can happen if I believe that I need to ask myself this question compared to something that is external for me. What if everything is internal? This question even doesn't start. Because it doesn't really matter. I have no purpose in trying to define myself. Why? I'll just live my life. Who in some ways said just live your life? And that's also a hint that in my opinion and a lot, a lot of others the Kuzari trying, the Rabbi Udalevi trying to send who only said just of your life? Comfortable. Nirvana. Get to the Nirvana. Buddha, yeah. Buddha in some way is the main perspective of the religious philosopher. Not so, not so much because he's not completely a philosopher but in some ways he is, and we'll speak about it in the future. And Rabbi Uda Levi is like, has this tension with the, with, with, with the Eastern religions. And tension we'll speak in the, that we'll speak about in the future. I want to stop over here. And I think that next week we will finish basically the opinion of the philosopher. And we will run, we will jump a little bit, and we'll start, it's a really interesting, the opinion of the Christian. Okay? Yom Tov.